Thank you, Mufu and Marie Yang. For those of you watching the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship presented by Capital One. Game two of the afternoon here in Raleigh, North Carolina. The three seed, NC State hosting 14 seed Maine. Kentucky advances to Monday's second round game after beating Princeton 82 to 77. The winner on Monday will move on to a sweet 16 matchup in the Greensboro Regional. I'm Melissa Lee alongside three-time WNBA Coach of the Year Mike Tebow, and there are only two rematches of regular season games in this tournament. This is one of them. That first meeting back in December between these two teams, Coach for Maine, not so pretty, but they're two very different teams now. Not so pretty. They lost by 38, but things have changed. First of all, North Carolina State has had a slew of injuries, basically playing six players a game. And for Maine, uh, they got Fonny Wadling back there, post player, who's their rebounder in the middle. That should help. The other thing is Coach Vachon for uh, Maine showed her team film, and they showed they got a lot of good shots early in that game. They just didn't knock them down. They norm normally knock down a lot of threes. They're going to need to do that today. And it'll be a three-point clinic from Maine. Here this afternoon. By the way, the other rematch in the tournament, Stanford and UC Davis. This is the fifth meeting all time between the Wolfpack and the Black Bears. NC State 4-0 in the series. Maine staying in the same hotel, same arena. They know what they're getting into against the Wolfpack. And we are underway. NC State controlling the opening tip. Well, you're going to see... North Carolina State try to get it into their post players early in the game. Lisa Penane has to kick it back out. We take a look at today's Capital One starting lineup for NC State. Got some size for NC State. And Maine knows they're not going to be able to run with the size of NC State today. Well, Penane has been the revelation. Capital One starting lineup for Maine. A lot of three-point sharpshooters on this squad full of international kids. And there's the first triple of the game, courtesy of Paris Lozano. They're going to shoot a lot of threes. This is the contrast. You saw a three by Maine. You saw a post up for Kinane for North Carolina State. She got inserted into the starting lineup about a third of the way into the season, and she's been a huge part of their offense. This is Dorsar, the point guard with the basketball from Israel. Jump shot, off back iron, and the rebound there for Kinane, the freshman, who has been fantastic this season. Inserted into the lineup because of injury after injury after injury after injury for NC State this season, starting at the beginning of the year, as that falls for Kai Crutchfield, the sophomore from Auburn. That's a big shot for North Carolina State because teams usually play off of her. They try to help off of her, take away post-ups, play the other players, and if Crutchfield can make shots like that, then, then the offense for North Carolina State gets a lot harder to defend. NC State with all the injuries, four huge players going down in this season. That's why Wes Moore is named one of the finalists for the 2019 Naismith Coach of the Year Award. He started out the season 22-0 after all of those injuries, able to bounce back each and every time. Every time. Four knee injuries is usually devastating to a team. But as we saw last year, Notre Dame went through the same thing. If you have some mental toughness about you, you can overcome some of these things. Lisa Kinane working baseline, trying to reverse the ball. Good defense by Wadling. Maine's basically going to play a Princeton-style offense. Four players on the perimeter. One post-up player who's a screener, plays inside and out. You're going to see a lot of ball movement, a lot of threes. Three-pointer on the way. NC State, 26-5 on the year, 12-4 in the ACC. That's a triple for Canadian. She's only taken seven all year, but she, I think she's made four of them. And she made one to actually win the Syracuse game for them at Syracuse with big shot late in the game. Just take away the numbers, right, and just add the percentage, which is 57%. Yep. <laughs> that looks better. Looks pretty good. Now we got another triple. Other side, and that's going to fall. Dorsar. Those, those were the shots that didn't go in the first time these guys played. It's a team that beat North Carolina and... 16 triples in the game to do it. Nice block. Maurice Rosignol, the senior. Weren't sure 
what to think of getting the rematch of a team they played in the regular season. But Maine said, hey, we're happy to be here. And we want to be a team that goes beyond just happy to be here. We want to win a game. We know what we're getting into with this team. Well, they're playing with confidence. They've won 14 straight coming into this game. Five seconds on the shot clock. That's an open look from three. The miss, Fonny Wadling from Sweden. Leslie, nice move. She's become an attacking player. You know, she has very efficient games. She shoots a high percentage from three, but she's learned to attack the basket against defenders who aren't as quick as her. Wes Moore called her a godsend. He says that they have their top recruiting class coming in next year due to what they were able to complete in the season a year ago in the body of work in the NCAA tournament run, and she was a huge part of that. Leslie again fires. No. It's like a little of a basket now for these two teams. One point lead for NC State. Hosting back to back seasons. Star fires. Yes. Highly confident player. All these guards from Maine shoot the three at a very high level. To Dee Dee Rogers, senior from Charlotte. I think Dee Dee Rogers is one of the most improved players in the ACC. She had to sit behind two senior post players last year, didn't play a lot of minutes, and yet now she comes in as a starter and has been a huge impact player for NC State. Doubled her minutes, points per game, rebounds per game. Westmore gives her credit, says most kids would have left the program. She stuck with it. Open three, Tanisha Sutton. Kamein had a touch for the rebound, and Leslie has it. Drives, the kick out, and nobody home. I think she saw Dee Dee Rogers there in the peripheral vision. But NC State got the early one-point lead. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by McDonald's. In the first quarter of action, NC State up by one over Maine, and that's just a small glimpse of a lost production a year ago for NC State. The four knee injuries, Alyssa Lee alongside three-time WNBA Coach of the Year, Mike Tebow. Well, Grace Hunter was their leading scorer when she went out at almost 15 points a game and six and a half rebounds, and Erica Cassell had been in the starting lineup at seven points and four and a half rebounds a game. That's a lot to lose from your lineup. They're basically down to playing six players right now, all 33 to 36 minutes apiece. They lost Kayla Ely to start the season. Armani Hawkins, January 10th. Her career is done, but the good news is everybody else gets to come back. Yes, the, the redshirt year will help them with their recruiting class that they have coming in. Last game for NC State is in the ACC tournament. They lost to Louisville by and 10. And got in foul trouble that game, and it really hurt them. They can't afford with their low numbers to be in foul trouble. Coach said he sat his players who were in foul trouble. Said it. looking back, he wished he hadn't. Five seconds on the shot clock. It's out of bounds. Good defense by Maine. Very good defense. They've, you know, even though they're giving up a lot of size to Kanane, they've really bottled her up. They've pushed her underneath the plane of the backboard and made it tough for her to jump back in to shoot. There's one of your four finalists for the 2019 Naismith Coach of the Year Award. Again, just for what he's been able to do with the four knee injuries this season, it's been sensational. And going coast to coast on the other side, Fonnie Wadley. First bucket of the game. And as we said, she missed the last time they played, and it's a big addition to their team. Some size, and they don't have a lot of size, so this is, they need her to be good. An iron for Leslie. Wadling was out in the first matchup, as you mentioned, with a concussion, and you can see the impact that kid has on this roster just based on what they do with her in the game and without her in the game. And you can see when they practiced yesterday how much she's a factor in their offense as far as getting teammates open with great screening. As we just saw there, which gave Rosignol a three-point look. There's Rob 
Rogers got into some trouble. Well, a nice pass. Three pointer. Blanca Milan. Again, not to bury the lead, but that's their leading scorer, averages 17 and a half points per game. 2019 America East Player and Defensive Player of the Year. That's that's quite a double double to get to, to get both the uh, MVP or Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year. This main team is loaded with some stars. Again, a lot of them, majority of the roster coming from overseas. Eight seconds on the shot clock. They kick it back out. Three pointer falls for Leslie. That was great defense inside on the post on Kinnam. But Leslie had a lot of room to operate to shoot the ball when it came back out. Five points with a graduate from Holly Springs, North Carolina, transferred in from Maryland. Lamont tries again. They're going to need her to have a, a, a good game for them to have a chance to win in this game. She's going, to get, yep, she's going to get a lot of attention from the NC State defense. Well, Kara Leslie is a big scorer, and she gets her shot here coming out of the post. Kunane makes a great pass. Leslie with plenty of space, an efficient three-point shooter. Just under 40%. Leslie with the five points. On the other side, it's Saar with five points for Maine. Rosignol assessed her first foul. Koenig from the free throw line, yes. Well, Ace, Ace Koenig is an interesting player. She came to NC State as a two guard, but with all the injuries, she's gone back to playing the point, which she actually likes, but it's really opened up her game to play both. And a great steal. The other end. Yeah, on the steal and converts the junior guard from British Columbia. I'm glad these players are helping us out by like, like making a play right after we talk about them. <laughs> Made her sound good, and then she wanted to show you she looks good, too. Just a wall of NC State players there. Ball is loose, and Crutchfield has it. Skip pass, wide open look again. From the corner. Almost the same spot as the last one. Great skip pass. 10-0 for NC State. Coach Westmore wanted a sellout. It's pretty close here today. Got Main, the fans fired up. Maine trying to survive the quarter here. Get a good shot at the end, get a little bit of help back at the end of the quarter. A second to go, and a shot falls short for Maine. A 10 0 run for NC State. Well, Ace Koenig, you know, most people know her for offense, but her defense got her a big play here. Jumping in the passing lane, getting the steal, going full court for the layup. That's a big play and got the run going for NC State. State to end the first quarter and Kentucky they're looking on taking notes because they battled the winner of this one on Monday night here in Raleigh North Carolina a great start for NC State the three seed in this pod Melissa Lee alongside three-time WNBA coach of the year Mike Tebow and coach Kira Leslie came in as uh, from high school as an athlete and not so much a shooter but boy she has worked on that over her time here yeah, at West Moore just said uh, you know I, I went in the gym and everybody told me she was a you know a physical specimen but wasn't that great a shooter he said then I watched her shoot he said well somebody's lying to me because she can shoot <laughs> so you know she's off to a great start eight points two threes and a layup she's been great great start for NC State they also had a couple of weeks off after the ACC tournament. Getting bounced in the semis. A lot of time to rest to recuperate as Fonnie Walding drops in a bucket. Well, she needs to make a few of those shots because uh, Alyssa Kunane is playing off of her and zoning up the middle of the paint. And she, she needs to keep the uh, NC State defense honest by making those. Otherwise, they're just going to be able to help on all drives. Again, looking again, she's become a focal part. They're trying to get it inside. Seven seconds. Ooh. Right between two defenders. It's a tough shot. 
That's the growth of Dee Dee Rogers uh, right now. Last year, she wouldn't even thought about doing that. Or if she did, Coach would have held his hands over his head in, in, in dread. Now she's become accomplished. She's learned how to attack the basket. Alicia Sutton picks up her first foul. We'll probably Rogers. see at some point during the game, Rogers will actually, they'll run an ISO play for her up at the elbow just to let her attack their defense. Yeah, she's really improved on her range. Still working on it. And is one of their toughest defenders. Guards one through five. Well, they switch out on pick and roll sometime when she's defending the post player and she can guard uh, offensive guards out on the perimeter. She's got good footwork. Pass tipped out of bounds by Koenig. And the main Black Bears, winners of the America East, finished 15 and one in conference play. They've won their last 14 games, feeling pretty good about how they finished the season. And trying to win a game in the tournament, Amy Vashon, their head coach, went to the tournament four years as a player for Maine. She's got a rich history of women's basketball. Yeah, she uh, she's in total love with the with the school and the program. You know how much it's meant to her career, and she said coming back to be the coach there at her alma mater was such a huge uh, honor for her. Her third season as the head coach, eight year total on staff, two time American East Coach of the Year. Took over the coaching duties after Richard Barron left. He is now the men's coach out there in Maine. Leslie picks up her first down. Rosignol. 41% shooter from outside. It's amazing how quickly the three-point shots can change the momentum of a game. You feel like you're playing great, and then that happens. Great hustle. And Blanca Milan is having a tough time here today. She's been held scoreless. Yeah, she's just off right and left on her shot a little bit. Not coming off her fingers really well. Rogers with six points on the afternoon. Looks like they're going to call Koenig for the region. And those are the fouls that Westmore uh, has talked about his team can't have. When you're down to six players, they, he, he can't have anybody in foul trouble early. Long two. Well, this is clearly a scouting report defense because North Carolina State is playing off of Wadling and uh, Sutton and making them make jump shots. Their two defenders are playing off of everybody. Rims out for Kanane. It's the second time she's fired off a triple in this game. It's scary how good she can be. You're talking about a freshman who's had to carry a huge load for this North Carolina State team. Sutton needs some help. Well, sooner or later, Sutton or Milan's going to have to make a shot like that. Leslie again. It's punched out of bounds. And it will stay here on this end. And North Carolina State's getting pretty good looks at the rim right now. They've missed a couple, but they've been wide open. The other thing that's striking about this game with the two teams defensively, unlike the game we saw before, is that both of these teams play a kind of a safer contained defense. They don't get out and extend like a Kentucky does and pressure the ball out on the wings as much. They play inside out. The miss and the putback. Rosenthal working hard on that play. The 
Rosignol's been their most consistent offensive player in the game. 8.8 .8 of their 17 points. She's got eight this afternoon and two rebounds. Open look for Rogers. I don't think Westmore's going to like that shot. He turned and walked away uh, to keep from saying something. 25-17 lead for NC State. Sutton 0 for 7. Milan 0 for 3. Milan averages 17 and a half points per game. Wadling, shot won't fall. Looking ahead, and a foul. So NC State off and running here, and a quick foul call on Kane. A senior forward, Kiara Leslie, has jump-started the North Carolina State offense, both inside and out, being able to put the ball on the floor and attack the basket, and then stepping back behind the three-point line on a pass back out of the post, and on a great cross-court pass by Crutchfield for the skip three. She's knocking him down. She's got him going. Eight points for Leslie, three rebounds. And some pretty good defense as well. Maine is a team that needs to knock down shots in order to win ball games. They had to knock down 16 threes to beat North Carolina out of the ACC earlier this year. Right now held to just three triples in the game. Now they, and they've had Maine's wide open looks too. Coming to you. <laughs> you had I'm your ready hands for it, ready. Coach. I'm ready for it. Ready for the rebound. Milan. Had a touch on it that was 22. Still scoreless in this game. America East Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year. Both teams finally made their first sub right at the start of this uh, period, or excuse me, after the timeout. Shots just not falling. 0 for 4, Milan, this afternoon. They'll make the kick out. Crutchfield rims out. Great hustle by Leslie. Well, now we see her get her offensive rebound for a score. And it's what your senior leader is supposed to do. I mean, if you're the star, that's what you have to do. They ask a lot of her, and she's able to deliver. Averages 15 points on the season. There is a shot from outside for Dorsar. Eight points for the sophomore from Israel. Leslie, all stripped away, and a foul is called. The NC State men's team faces Harvard in a second round NIT matchup. You can catch it tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern on ESPNU and the ESPN app. Also visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Coach, we were here watching all the practices yesterday, and the men's team came in and had to retake the floor. That's interesting. In the NIT, uh, they're experimenting with some different rules. They put down the NBA uh, lane and a longer three-point line, trying to see uh, what effect. They've, a couple years in a row now, the NIT has experiment, experimented with some rules. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out over the tournament. The fans here in Raleigh, it's a fun time of year. You gotta pick your poison. Do you you, you come to all the games? You, which well, you know you me. I just come to all you of come them. You come to all of them. <laughs> they get a full session on the weekend. Nine seconds on the shot clock here for me. Five. Wadling fires. Long two. Got it. Well, if she can make more of those, it's going to force the NC State defense to come out a little bit. They're hanging in the game a whole lot better than the last time they are here and feeling good about it, I think. Six-point lead for NC State. Not anymore. And the irony is both teams basically ran the same play against each other on the two possessions up and down the floor. First matchup between the two teams, an 84 to 46 blowout over Maine. 
and coach Amy Vashon told us that Westmore actually went light on her, her team that night. Could have been worse. Sutton, three-pointer no. We're really allowing, Sutton's only a 25% three-point shooter, so anything she makes is, is a bonus for them. That's in and out of the hands of Leslie. It will be main basketball. Coming up at the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report, Maria Taylor, Andy, and Rebecca will look at UCLA, Tennessee, Syracuse, Fordham, and Central Michigan versus Michigan State. You think Susie was happy with that draw from Michigan oh, State, Central man. Michigan? <laughs> <laughs> right down the road. <laughs> be a great matchup, especially for those fans. Leslie, by the way, picks up her second foul. That could be key and something to watch for. Well, again, again, like we talked about in the first game, you cannot make a mistake on one end and compound it by having a foul and getting yourself in trouble that way. Just play the next play. A turnover on the other end. Third turnover of the game for Maine. This is a far more calm uh, game than the first game we saw today, which was a frenzied game in many ways. It's doing a good job taking care of the basketball. That was easy for Kanae. Good no call by the official. A little bit of a flop. Had no bearing on the play. NC State out rebounding Maine 21 to 11. That's what be expected. Amy Vashon knew she wouldn't be able to hang with their style of play. Stick to what they do best. Outside shooters. That pass intercepted. Maine gets it back. Dorsar needs some help. And you got to know the shot clock. There's six seconds left. Driving to the hole. And no basket. They're going to call a traveling violation on Tanisha Sutton. It's one of those momentum changers. Wow. If it had gone the other way, yeah, you I'd see like Vashon see not one. happy at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. She called it on the jump stop, but I, I thought it was a legal play. Under a minute to go. Aaron Wilder before the half. Koenig fires. Another opportunity for NC State. Did not hit rim, so we have six seconds on the shot clock. Yes! Kai Crutchfield. And a foul call. Every shot, every shot that Kai Crutchfield makes is a bonus shot for NC State. Great kick out, close out. They didn't let her land, and that's why the foul was called. They didn't get her on the arm, I don't think, but they didn't let her come straight down and land on the floor. First foul assessed to Dorsar. Largest lead of the game for NC State. 45.3 to go before the half. It really feels like right now Maine is playing three against five offensively a little bit because Wadling and, and Sutton are not being defended on the perimeter. Three seconds, shot off the mark, and Maine has been pushed deep into their shot clock here in the last couple of possessions. Now this is a really good call by the official. So Dee Dee Rogers heard the buzzer, didn't understand that she had caught it before the buzzer went off, thought that, you know, that, that there was going to be a violation call and basically traveled walking up the floor. The basketball. And, and so it's Maine's ball back. Right call by the officials. Maine will get it back with 12.7 to go. Shot clock turned off. And Wadling will send it out of bounds off of NC State. 10.9 on the inbound play. Out of bounds now, NC State gets it back with 8.4. All these little handoffs in tight areas are tough to do uh, when the sideline is actually an extra defender for you. You only have so much space and somebody gets their hands in and knocks it out. The speed, Crutchville trying to penetrate. Second to go, fires. has had a tremendous first half. With seven seconds to go, they push it down the floor, reverse the ball, Crutchfield knows, she sees it, she sees the rim, wide open shot, knocks it down. 
NC State up 39-22 going to the half. Time for the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. We're watching NC State taking on Maine and Westmore. They had a program best start to their season, and yeah. now they're rolling in the tournament. Maria Taylor, Rebecca Lobo, and Andy Landers. And you saw Kai Crutchfield knocking down a shot to go into the locker room. They they well, well timed with that half court buzzer. But uh, I, I think that the difference in this game is has been North Carolina State on the defensive end of the floor. They've been real disruptive to what Maine wants to do. They've held them to 32 percent from the floor, but moreover. They've taken 12 of their possessions away by virtue of turning them over. You know, when you're when you're playing on the other team's court as Maine is with NC State, probably a little bit better team. You need all the possessions you can get. That's just not happening. Credit North Carolina State's defense. And more than half of Maine's field goal attempts is from the three-point line. That's what they do. They mm -hmm. spread you out. But if you can get make them take it a little bit quicker than they normally would by closing out defensively the way NC State has, it makes it more difficult to drain those. All right, well, let's try to make it look easy as we roll through some of these highlights, okay? It's Miller time, 28 points. I mean, come on now. Open the bucket. Princeton taking on Kentucky. And the Princeton offense working really well. They had a lot of open shots. Yeah, a little just penetrate, like kick out, find the open man, score it. They got some back doors early on Kentucky, went up on Kentucky. This was a good game until the second half. Kentucky made some adjustments, defended it a little tighter. Macy Morris here with a three, got going in the second half. So did Taylor Murray. Taylor Murray was terrific, not only with their distribution of the basketball, steals, shots, key plays coming down the stretch. Kentucky wins this one. Yeah, the Wildcats were down four at half, but then they were able to turn on the jet shot at almost 60% from the field in the second half, and they get to advance in Raleigh. And remember, they get to take on either NC State or Maine, who are right now sitting in the locker room in their half-court huddles. And Kai Crutchfield, she's probably trying to get back out on the court because she had an excellent first half. Oh, there was a hand in her face. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter. We'll pack up big. This halftime report is brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. The number three seed NC State Wolfpack on top of the 14 seed Maine Black Bears, 39-22 at the half. I'm Melissa Lee alongside Mike Tebow and Coach Story of the game, NC State's defense sharp early on. They played a real scouting report defense where they're sagging off inside. Both Dee Dee Rogers and Alyssa Kinane are guarding the paint and really not coming out a, a, at all on the perimeter to defend. They're just sagging. They're making people have to, making Fanny Wadling and uh, Sutton shoot jump shots, and they've done a good job of, of just taking away any layup possibilities. They're playing inside out. Uh, on the next play, you have Kanane and Rogers both playing. You got just a semi close out to the three point shooters. At the other end of the floor, the biggest deal is Kai Crutchfield has been the X factor, knocking down three point shots, 10 points. Uh, double her average for the season. Yeah, averages just a shade under six per game. And for the University of Maine, they've got just the four triples here today. This is a team that needed seven to pull it to within three in a loss to Duke and beat North Carolina by dropping in 16 triples. Their leading scorer, player of the year in the America East, Blanca Milan, scoreless in the first half, as well as Tanisha Sutton, a redshirt senior from Philly. Basically, Maine right there gave NC State a dose of their own defense, playing off of Dee Rogers and Kinane, trying to get them to shoot outside shots, taking away the penetration of Crutchfield and Leslie and, and uh, Ace Koenig. Jump shot. And good for Rosignol. Well, she's, she hasn't been afraid of the moment. She's come out firing. She and uh, Dorzar have come out shooting the ball. They need somebody else to join in. It's all about the body language in the first half. And Milan and Sutton not quite looking like they normally have throughout the course of the season. Yeah, both of them are first-team all-conference players. Uh, you expect them to be aggressive. And right now, when you miss the first couple shots like that, they look a little reluctant to be a part of the offense. See if that changes here, second half. Easy on the inbound. NC State works on inbounds plays every practice that I've ever been to. 
And they're one of the better teams in the country at scoring off baseline out of bounds plays. Eight points for Kanae, the freshman. Again, we see Rogers and Kanae playing inside out, basically just paying the paint, encouraging shots. Dorsar fires, rims out, and the offensive rebound is there by Wadley. When you're going to play like that, though, you still got to go find somebody to block out. You can't just turn and think the ball's going to come to you on a rebound. And Sutton get a shot off. Dor will try again. This time hits Pater. Well, the one thing Sutton has done to help her team is she set good screens for uh, Dorsar and uh, Rosignol to get open. 10 for Rosignol and 11 for Saar. Wildling with six, that's it for me. Block shot. Samalon affecting the game on the other end. And it's why she was the defensive player of the year in their conference. Off the screen, Saar. Sutton. She is denied. Here comes Rogers. Great the pass. pass. Wow. Great sequence. Crutchfield doubling her average now with 12 points. I'm so impressed with how much Dee Dee Rogers has improved in one year. She's like a different player than a year ago. It's one thing to hear from Coach, right? And it's another thing to actually see it live and how she affects the game, even for the things that don't show up on the stat sheet, Coach. Exactly. Her poise. You know, usually you need to have played a lot of minutes in your career to kind of have that poise as a senior. Archfield has also been impressive. The ball in her hand now, just the sophomore. Rogers out to Koenig. Fires. No. Boy, we watched practice yesterday. I don't remember Koenig missing more than two shots the entire day. That one was halfway down. Off the mark for Saar. One thing that Coach Vashon told us, one, they got to shoot the ball and shoot it well. But two, they can't force things. And Maine has been forcing things. They started that towards the end of the first half. We're starting to see it again, Coach. Well, part of the problem is I don't think they're used to being defended like this. I don't, the, the, the extra two defenders in the lane uh, has made a big difference to them mentally, I think. Alon's still looking for her first bucket of the game. He's gonna drive and draws the foul. No. No bucket there. The second round coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championship continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Kara Leslie picks up her third foul. Quick shot. The miss, and now the putback, and now the maybe, first bucket of the game. Maybe Come just on. seeing it go through will help her get her going. She fouled her own miss. She knew she had missed, but getting a layup sometimes just jump starts you mentally. She's 0 for 5 until that bucket there. Great seal in the lane here by Kunane to draw the foul. Wildling got caught dead behind and had no nothing she could do about it. First foul assessed to Wadling here today. She's been an impressive kid to watch here this afternoon as well. She has the six points and six rebounds on the afternoon. Well, they called an offensive foul on, on the screen. Called it on Kune. That is her Kune, second. She must have moved on the pick. We got screened off a little bit, couldn't see it on the other side of the floor. Kayla Jones in now for NC State, their one real sub that they use. And the bump, and you saw Crutchfield was about to turn on the Jets and go. She's going to be feeling pretty good and confident about her game so far. It's been a good one. Well, she struggled early in the year when, you know, you're replacing a player like Grace Jones in the starting lineup, who's the team's leading scorer. Now you're being asked to be a major contributor. But she's gotten so much better as the season's gone on. 
As Westmore said, as Panay gets the bucket and the foul. Makai got thrown into the fire, has handled it well, as has this entire NC State Wolfpack team here on the afternoon. Up big, 45-29. NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. North Carolina and this regional feeding the Greensboro Regional and a date with either Iowa or Missouri and two fantastic finishes yesterday round one of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Melissa Lee alongside Mike Tebow here with you this afternoon on the campus of NC State. Well, this is kind of the make or break time of the game right now for Maine. They've got to get a little run going if they want to get back in this game. Come along, the leading scorer, able to knock down her first bucket just a few moments ago. That's that a will good help start. From Dorsar. Yep, that's a good start. It's a 38 point win for the Wolfpack. These two teams met back on December 15th of this year, excuse me, last year, 2018. Off the mark for Koenig. They like to run plays for Conan coming out of timeouts. Rims out. Boy, Milan, she just can't catch a break right now. She's a junior. She'll come back next year. I'm not sure that uh, Westmore wanted that shot that quickly from Kayla Jones right there. They feel like they can get better shots. So they a lot of zeros when you look at up and down the score sheet. Rosenthal with 10, Sar 13, Milan 2, Wadling with 6. That's it. For me. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Along with the basketball, gives it up to Sutton. Oh. And she gets the bounce. Her first she bucket got, of the game. She, that, that was a big bounce to get, too. Kept them in, uh, in range now. 11 point game. Could have gone the other way. Now the top two scores. Knock down the first buckets of the ball game. What will that look like moving forward? Good passing inside. The name hits the deck. Well, the other thing right now is Leslie on the bench with three fouls has changed the flow of the game a little bit for NC State, too. Kanane is a 76%. Free throw shooter, Milan, Milan, excuse me, picks up her third foul. NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues next at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ESPN2 with more first round matchups. Check local listings for the game in your area and remember that all of them are streaming live on the ESPN app. It's such a contrast in styles of, of the two games we've had today. This one is a much more contained game. We've had very few whistles. Maine, Maine hasn't shot a free throw yet, or maybe one. Still no, waiting to go. Still. still waiting for that first shot to get to the free throw line. Seven seconds on the shot clock. And Kayla Jones taking a beating as she drives in strong to the hole, the sophomore from North Carolina. Somehow I think when she runs into people, they take as much of beating as she does. Milan just picked up her fourth foul. And you see it all over the look on the face of the head coach for Maine, Amy Vashon. Vashon, her leading scorer coach, is just limited just here tough. to just one bucket. A two-pointer for this afternoon. Well, they're going to sub four here. McVicker coming in. Maybe this will jumpstart their team in a weird kind of way. But get, get somebody else coming in the game. Doesn't have their thoughts in their head. It's Maddie McVicker, the senior guard from Callis, Maine. Averages three points per game. 
averages don't matter anymore if they're not knocking shots down in the exactly. lawn. Having a really tough time here this afternoon. We'll see what Vic Vicker can do in her place. Trying to work inside, outside, Sar. Five seconds on the shot clock. That is money. Wow. She's kept them in the game all by herself at times. And she and Rosignol have not been phased by the game. And now Sutton. Oh. Sutton off of her feet, and she was dying to get that opportunity <laughs> for that bucket. It's been a tough go for her here today. Yeah, she's a terrific defensive player, and that's a way to get yourself going in offense, but she just she kind of looked up to get a look at the basket and bounced off her foot. We all felt her pain on that one. Yes, we did. Another steal. Now can Maine convert? A minute remaining in the quarter. Waddling, a little bit of a teardrop shot, and the rebound is pulled down by Kinane. I think Ace needs to reward Kinane for running the floor there. She runs to get post position as good as she is in the post. Got to give it to her. Okay, working inside, turnaround shot. Yes. Great touch. She can turn with either hand, either shoulder. 14 points for the freshman from Summerfield, North Carolina. Three-pointer McVicker off the glass, no. The game pulls down the rebound, and that is how the third quarter of action will end. NC State holding on to their big lead here, 51-37. The three-seed NC State in the driver's seat as we start the fourth quarter of play of 51-37 over the 14-seed Maine. It has been a tough go for Maine's leading scorers who make this team go as you see the difference. Blanca Milan, Tanisha Sutton, what they've done for the season, and then today. Yeah, I mean... Two for 18 from the floor combined from them. One for 11 from three. It's just a tough way. I mean, they're both first team all conference players in the America East, and now they're they're having a they're having a tough go finding a way to get a ball get the ball in the basket. Lon is at the bench at the end of that quarter. Picked up her fourth foul. She's back in the game to start the fourth. Melissa Lee, alongside three-time WNBA Coach of the Year Mike T-Ball, Lon fires. I mean, one fortunate thing for Maine is not like NC State came out and played great in that quarter either. You know, Leslie didn't score. Uh, they didn't, they, not a lot of points scored in the quarter by either team. She scores now. Come back out, get herself going. 15 points for Kiera Leslie. Try again. Offensive rebound is there by Wadling. Another opportunity. Sar baseline. And swings Good. it back out. Great patience to not try to force a pass in the lane when she was driving baseline. There's a look for Sutton. Same look, same result. We talked about how May went back and looked at the video of their game against NC State earlier in the season. And they had some great looks, some great opportunities. They're going to go back and probably look at this tape and think the same thing, Coach. Yeah, the difference is in this game, I think, is it, that NC State had a lot more time to prepare uh, for this. So the open looks that they're getting today, Maine, a lot of them are actually by design from NC State. They're allowing Sutton to have wide open looks. Not so much from Milan. Hers have been contested, but Sutton's been allowed to shoot the three. 
Judy Rogers. She is fouled. And this is just a look at what they did in the first meeting. Maine did not shoot the ball well at all. And carry over that a couple months later, same situation. I think the thing that's improved for Maine in this in, in, since last time is their defense. They've done a better job on NC State this time. They just haven't done any better on the offensive end. Point in the paint, 26 to 6 in favor of NC State. So that's a number I think we all kind of expected, even Maine expected yep. that, but they also expected Maine. They would have a lot more three-pointers by this point in the fourth quarter. They're sitting at seven for the game. Yep, and they've had the looks to do it. The other problem for Maine is they don't have an offense that's a quick hitter offense that you can just come down and score rapidly. Their offense takes a lot of time every time in the possession. And when you're down this many points, you need quicker scores. Five seconds on the shot clock. And that's off the glass and good for Wadley. I don't think she called bank. I don't think she did either, but she'll take it. Now a 14-point lead for NC State. Trying to advance to a Monday evening date with Kentucky. We defeated Princeton earlier today. I think if NC State wanted to be a little bit boring with their offense, they could throw it to Kanane every time down in the post, and something that good would happen a lot. She had eight points all by herself in the third quarter alone. Special kid, four-time ACC Rookie of the Week. 20 games of 10-plus points or more. Very effective. And the lawn. So is she going to get going now with seven minutes to go? I don't know. I don't know what kind of uh, kid she is in that regard, but she sure got to feel good about seeing that go through. That was about the most confident I've seen her taking a shot here yep. today. Well, we nice saw that in practice yesterday. They've worked hard over the last couple of weeks to get more backdoor plays for Leslie and Koenig with people playing on top of them on the perimeter. Look really good there. Modeling did a nice job setting that screen to find an opening and give and go back to her. And Kanane is there. Just a big body. Ninth rebound for Kanane. She's going to be a special player. You're yeah. talking about a 6'5 freshman who has a lot of poise, is not afraid of big moments. Even that shot right there, Coach, so she ran in immediately to go grab her own, her own miss. Yeah, well, she, she knows her shooting, whether she's making it or not. <laughs> Um, I'm just so impressed by her. I saw her uh, play early in the season. Uh, North Carolina State played up in D.C. at Georgetown, and she was coming off the bench, but she put on a show that day, and you could see that great things were about to happen for her. And she was playing 20 minutes or so and then moved into that bigger role with Cassell when she went down with her injury. We just want to get her more touches. She's been very efficient this season. That is battered away by Kayla Jones. They gave the ball to NC State, but I thought Jones knocked it out. A couple players from uh, Maine were questioning the call, but. Another thing about Kanane that Wes Moore made a point to mention, it is a big jump from high school to the ACC. Yes, it is. And she's done a fantastic job within that jump. Shooting 57% on the season, as that rims out for Leslie. The future is bright, and again, they got a Fantastic recruiting class incoming. They got the players that were hurt coming back and incoming Absolutely. recruiting class, returning players like Kanane and, and Koenig. It's a great future here at NC State. So we told uh, Coach Moore, so what you're saying, Coach, is that you're loaded <laughs> next season. Uh, yeah, a little bit. You know he would never completely admit that out <laughs> loud, though. But he's smiling in his quiet moments. <laughs> you know that. There's a steal on this end. Alon gives it up. The outside shot goes down for Rossignol. First time we've called her name in a while. She's got 13. Well, they've guarded her with a little bit more size in this third quarter. And it got it, took her out of the offense. Pick 
out, swing it around, crush field. Six seconds on the shot clock. The bounce puts it on the floor. And that one is airmail by Rosin Null. She was trying again from that same location on the other side that. And she does what all Betty good Pager. shooters do. She smiled and then she wiped her hands off like they was wet. <laughs> There's not going to be any wiping of hands for Leslie there. Great look at three. 20 points for the grad from Holly Springs, North Carolina. Yeah, Leslie started her career in Maryland and then transferred back here. She's from this area. Her brother played here. That was a natural fit for her to come back. Three Rosignol. A couple of buckets for her from outside here in the fourth. Well, if this is her last game, she's going to go down firing. Senior guard from Van Buren, Maine. 16 points in the matchup, four rebounds and an assist. NC State take a little bit more clock on each play right now. Crutchfield. Off the glass and good, 14 points for her. She has had an outstanding game. Number three to go. Again, taking a lot of time off the clock, trying to get a good shot. Eight seconds on the shot clock for Dorsar. Swing it around. We've got a few coaches behind us here telling Kayla Jones to slow it down. <laughs> They've gone up yeah. and down the court, and we didn't have any stoppage of play there for a while. And every time Maine chips away at the lead, NC State comes right back. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. It goes to Kiara Leslie. 20.6 rebounds on the day. She's been terrific. That's what a senior leader should be. She's done it everywhere on the court. She's knocked down threes, three for seven. It's her eighth 20 point game of the season. She's gotten on the boards for six boards, as you said, but she's been able to drive it when they, that's called for. She's read the game really well today, knowing when to shoot the jump shot, when to attack the rim. As Westmore said when he got here, he said he heard she was an okay shooter, turned herself into a shooter, transferred in, and he saw her putting up shots and said, oh, that's pretty good. I'll take that. And they asked so much of her, not just from the offensive end, but defensively in every aspect of the game. Well, they got her out now, uh, probably figuring that they can rest her down the stretch here. Three seconds on the shot clock. Crutchfield. Saar with the rebound. I've been impressed with North Carolina State's scouting report defense and taking away key players for Maine, and making them have to use a ton of shot clock to get a good look. Yeah, we got four seconds there for Dorsar. Air melts it, and it's given back to NC State. Got some subs in the game now, too. Milan, disappointing day for her as well as Tanisha Sutton for Maine. Well below their averages on the year. Milan with just four points, averages 17 One. per game. Sutton with three points, averages 14. Took a 20 second timeout just to sub here, get people in the game. They've already subbed Jada Rice in. Got a minute remaining here in Raleigh, 63-48, NC State. Catch SportsCenter tonight at 
after Top Ring Boxing with John Anderson and Steve Levy. We'll have all the musty plays from the Murray State and Florida State matchup. Plus, KD leads the Warriors against Luka Doncic and the Mavs. And UFC heavyweight champ Daniel Cormier joins the show to break down Pettis Thompson. Sports Center, midnight Eastern, 9 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Final minute of action here in NC State on top of Maine, the three seed on top of the 14th seed, and quite a few substitutions to give some of the upperclassmen some love. Leslie alongside Mike Tebow will be here this afternoon. I always love when the subs are in the game and the, and the veterans are on the bench rooting for these guys to make shots at the end of games. The whole NC State bench was up thinking that the ball was going in. Three-pointer falls for Rosignol. That's a senior for me. Touch Billy with the ball in her hands. 14 points here today. Her average is 5.8 on the season. Four seconds on the clock. Shot is up. And that'll do it. NC State advances. A final score is 63-51. NC State advances. Now let's send you the Central Michigan, Michigan State matchup.